Welcome back. Here we go. This is going to be part two of the uh, second night videos. Um, next step in our manual is the pinion support bearing, it, uh, followed by the uh, pinion support bearing motor mount side plates, and then we're also going to put the motor on the motor mount. Thought I would take a quick second and just uh, go through the motor I'm going to run real fast. I am a uh, Scorpion guy through and through. Been a uh, pleasure to be a part of Team Scorpion for a couple of years now, and uh, this is a pretty easy decision. Um, this is going to be a 12 cell 766, so I went with a 500 kV motor, a 520 or a 540 kV would have worked just as well. Um, being that the kit comes with 13 tooth pinion, I chose a 500 kV motor to help um, get my ideal RPM. Don't want to be in the 1700, 1800, 1900 range, not going crazy high. Uh, and the 13 tooth pinion with 12 cell gives me there um, perfect with a 500 kV. A couple things to note, the motor mount on the 766 is a little bit thicker than some uh, motor mounts out there. The supplied 4x6, um, four uh, uh, actually I believe they're 4x10 motor mount bolts that you, you were provided with the Scorpion motors are not quite long enough. I went down to the hardware store and picked up some 4x12s. That is going to give me more than enough clearance to your motor mount and get good bite into the motor. Um, and make everything nice and solid never be a problem so um, if your motor did not come with 4x12s you'll need to go pick some up alright I'm going to uh, stop the camera assembly is pretty straightforward um, I'm going to use red Loctite on the bolts to hold the motor mount to the motor uh, and then I will assemble the pinion support and the main and the motor mount into the frame with blue Loctite since the main gear is already in the helicopter we will uh, just go ahead and set the mesh and tighten it down and call it a day okay so I now have my pinion support bearing in and the side plates on both sides now obviously this is very very loose um, we haven't even begun to get the motor in there get the mesh set so there's no Loctite on these four bolts but everything slides real nice and easy get everything in place uh, one quick note about the motor and pinion um, I did get the motor mount on. Zoom this in a little bit for you. Did get the motor mount on. Again, red Loctite on my 4x12 volts. Snug everything down nice and tight. Quick note about orientation. Um, in the helicopter, the rounded side goes towards the main gear. Um, so when you're planning which side of the mount you want your motor mount, your motor wires to come out on, remember that these these um, feet that stand out by come to a points on the sides, those go towards the nose. So since the ESC is on the nose, make sure you orient your wires facing forward. Um, it'd be very easy to clock this 180 degrees out or 90 degrees out and have your wires facing in a weird direction. So pay attention to that orientation we put together. Also, I did loosely set this, the 13 tooth pinion on there, get the um, set screw lined up with a flat spot, but there's no Loctite on that yet and the pinion is ran all the way up against the motor. When, once we get the motor mount in the helicopter and get the bolts started so it's also moving freely for mesh setting, we will um, loosen the set screw and allow the pinion to drop down onto this pinion support bearing. This is very important. This pinion has a ridge on it that is designed to grab the inner bearing race on the pinion support bearing. If you don't actually allow the pinion to rest on the support bearing and then tighten up the, the set screw, you're actually defeating the purpose of having the pinion support bearing. The pinion support bearing there is to keep the, the downward force created by the helical gear from pulling the shaft out of the can. And, and uh, it also helps increase the life of your motor bearing. So when we get this all together, I'll, I'll go through it one more time, but we're going to put this in the helicopter. Um, again, do not lock tight the, these bolts yet. We've got to set the mesh just yet. Okay, I want to try to show you how I do this. I have the motor in now, and I've got um, the majority of the motor mount bolts are in, but not tight. Um, the way I set the mesh is I push the motor in until it's too tight, and then I back it off just a touch. Um, just like the spur gear, this is a darn near zero last joint. You need to have a little lash. The gear is going to expand as it gets hot. Um, but you don't want to have a bunch. Basically, you just want to be able to just hear it click. And you got to try it in several places around the main gear because you're going to have pl um, places where uh, the mesh is slightly different. All right, so this is feeling pretty good. And then what I do is after I tighten uh, one of the bolts and I check it again just to make sure nothing has changed. 
I come up here and I'll tighten maybe the two bolts on the pinion support bearing on this side. Check it again just to make sure as things are snugging up they're not moving. Feeling good. Now I'm going to rotate the helicopter. Do the same process on this side. Check the mesh. Snug up some bolts. Check it again. The mesh is still feeling good. We're going to snug up another one. And then you just repeat that process until you have all 10 of the motor mount and pinion support bearings tight and the mesh feels good. Um, also, this is really hard to film so I didn't try, but now that the mesh is set, you can look down inside the main gear here, down in through here through the, through the front, and you can get your uh, 1.5 in there and loosen that set screw to make sure the pinion support the pinion is up against the pinion support bearing. Do not forget to lock tight the set screw. I use red there. I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera. I'm going to pull all of my motor mounts one at one motor mount bolts one at a time and lock tight and tighten them back up. Be 120% sure my mesh feels good. And when we come back, we're ready to look at the next step in the manual. All right, this bad boy is getting hard to keep in the camera frame. As you can see, we now have the motor is in. All 10 bolts are tight. Mesh feels good. Checked in several places around the head, around the gear. That is good. Now, just again, 120%. Be sure. Check your pinion. Make sure you lock tight that set screw. The next step in the manual, I do believe, we start getting with the fun stuff here. I think it takes us to the... Motor is in, mesh is set. Yep, now we're ready to put the ESC tray together. And then we get to start talking about servos. So let me get the ESC tray built. That is pretty straightforward. That is simply, put that out of the way, a piece of two millimeter carbon. And then the last two of our frame standoff, our frame spacers. The front frame spacer has the receptacles for the slide on posts for the front canopy and then you've got two metric socket screws for the top of the front of the SE tray. I'm going to go ahead and get that put together and um, be sure my motor is 100% um, and I'm going to go ahead and, and put the tray on. I'm not going to lock tight the tray in because I'll have to move the tray a couple times while I'm um, dealing with the ESC which we'll get to here shortly but I am going to go ahead and uh, assemble the tray. All right. ESC tray is in. Again, tentatively, these bolts are not locked tight or they're not even completely tight because that tray is going to have to come back off when I'm dealing with my ESC and my BEC. But since I'm assembling per the manual, I want to have it on there, show you how it looks. Nice thing is, is this, this ESC tray is pre-drilled for the mounting tabs for a lot of the more popular speed controllers, including the, the Castle series. So if you have some uh, Castle ESC, you'll be able to bolt it down without a drill if you don't need, if uh, you want to. Um, but most of the guys with Cosmics though, you'll need the drill holes. The holes aren't already there for your Cosmic locking tabs. Um, the next steps in the manual take us right into the end of the, um, right into the servos, which gives me an opportunity to talk about these servo mounting um, brackets. Just like the, all the electric synergies before it and even the N7 for that matter, you have some flexibility on when it comes to where to mount the elevator servo and the tail servo and that is because both frame sides are identical so you can either mount the elevator servo on the left side right side same with the tail left side or right side completely up to you it makes no difference to the geometry the functionality of the helicopter either way the manual has us putting the elevator servo on the right and the tail servo on the left so that's how I'm going to build mine that's the way I've always done it but if you want to have the elevator and the tail on the same side so be it right side left side it doesn't matter as long as you have an elevator and a tail servo you'll be good so I'm going to stop, um, I'm going to uh, clear the deck, get my servos out of their packages, um, I am going to pre-assemble the, ser the Synergy um, servo horns, uh, I'll talk about those once they're actually installed, and then when I get back we will uh, talk about, the briefly run you through electronics I'm going to run, um, but electronics aren't um, the purpose of the build video so I won't spend too much time on that. And then I'll probably take a big break and get electronics mounted up and the preliminary like um, uh, setup done. So be one or two more breaks and then we're going to take a big jump forward. Okay, so a lot's happened since the last break. Um, I went ahead and powered through making the servo horns and I do apologize 
For any of you who have never built a Synergy kit before, I did not stop to think to film that. Basically, uh, with the kit come these these two millimeter carbon fiber servo arms that happen to have what Matt feels to be the most op um, optimum geometry, 20 millimeter, 20 millimeter bar sp ball spacing for the cyclic servos. Now, depending upon what servo you have, uh, you may have to adjust that a little bit. Um, I have ran MKS, Fataba, Outrage Torque, um, BK, Align, all those kind of servos um, with these carbon fiber horns have been fine. I'm hearing the X8s have a little bit more um, travel than most servos, so the, the 20 millimeter might be a little long, um, but you'll have to play with that. 95% of the servos on the market is 20 millimeter spacing is perfect. Now these carbon fiber horns are designed to bolt up to the small round Fataba wheels as you can see here. Now I'm a Fataba guy, I've been using Fataba servos and off and on for most of uh, my career so I have lots of these little servo wheels laying around. You can buy them at Servo City for 99 cents, they're not expensive. This is the sacrificial part. In a crash, the plastic splines are going to strip around the servo splines. So this is designed to be the sacrificial part. So this little 99 cent part breaks instead of your $50 servo gears. Uh, goes together pretty well. You just got some small metric cap screws, um, nut and bolts. I use red Loctite on the nuts to hold them together. Blue Loctite on the screw that hold the servo in. Um, one thing I did do well, b before I um, came back to camera, I powered all my electronics up, did a preliminary setup, set my endpoints and whatnot in the radio with my V-Bar Neo, so I was able to find center on these servos to build these horns, so um, it's close to 90 degrees on the cyclics, on the aileron elevator, aileron and pitch, and again, uh, as close to straight as I can um, with the elevator servo. That would just ensure I don't need a ton of um, electronic um, sub trim. For the tail, I was going to run a BLS 276 HV tail, but it didn't come in in time. And I don't want to hold up this build. I already had this brand new in the box, um, MKS HBL 980. It's a really good high voltage, um, narrow band, um, 760 center pulse tail servo, 560 hertz uh, refresh rate. It's a very good servo. I run this on my N7. I ran them on my um, E7 SEs. My Speedbird had one of these on it at Urcha. It's a great tail servo. Um, you're going to do just well, just fine. Um, the next steps in the manual are actually mounting these servos um, and going through um, that process. You've got four of these little aluminum uh, braces. Two are used to mount the elevator servo and two of them are used to mount the uh, rudder servo. The front two cyclic servos or the aileron and the pitch as they're traditionally referred to um, bolt right to the motor, motor block so those are pretty easy. Um, a lot's going to happen in this next camera cut. Uh, in fact, I probably won't get back to filming um, this evening because I'm going to mount the servos and I'm going to um, do a little preliminary wiring. I'm going to solder up my speed controller, solder up my BEC, um, do a lot of little tedious things. I will show you all that at the beginning of the next video, but when we come back, we're going to be ready to talk about the swash plate and the pitch linkage. And tomorrow we will do the um, finish up with the head and the pitch linkage as I said and um, probably at the end of that video start showing you how my electronics space out on the frame and then the final video probably won't be produced until Monday but the final video will be building the tail setting up the tail and then um, some final overview so we are we are a lot closer to being done than it feels a lot's gonna happen before this next break so uh, go get a drink go get a drink a cup of coffee uh, by the time you're ready to watch the next clip, it's going to be a lot more done.